Let's go to Sarah in San Diego, California. What's up, Sarah? Hi, Dr. John. How are you? Just rocking on to the break of dawn. What about you? Yeah, doing well. Thank is you it, so much for having it, me on the call. Oh, of course. Is it beautiful in San Diego? <laughs> yes, very sunny and <laughs> warm. Uh, so great. It's, it's <laughs> cold and gray here in Nashville. It's still beautiful, but man, however I think of San Diego, I just think of everybody smiling. Yes. It's hard to be sad there. Awesome. Hey, so what's up? (laughs) Well, um, I have a question. So my husband and I have been married for 13 years. Uh, We have two amazing boys. They're both, they're nine and 12 years old. And um, you and your husband still like each other? (laughs) We do. Yes. Most of the time. (laughs) 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 We've made it through a tough season, but you know, yeah. (laughs) Uh, When anyone says we've been married 13 years and We've got two kids, and our kids are amazing. <laughs> that gap is usually like, <laughs> kind of sucks right now, kind of sucks, but it's cool. Like that. <laughs> well, these are the three and four, I would say, years old. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you'll kind of like each other. Um, What's up? Yeah, uh, so we're both former athletes. That's actually how we met. And so our sons are very involved in sports. Um, and we've had them in sports, you know, very young age. Uh, My husband's a a dad coach, I guess, if you want to put him in that caliber. And um, over, I guess, the last couple of years, things have gotten, I would say, pretty intense with um, with like his involvement in coaching and things like that. And um, the closer that our oldest in particular gets to high school, um, I just feel like his the the intensity there, uh, my husband's coaching and and it there. Sometimes it just gets, I think, a little bit over the top. Mm -hmm. Um, And I kind of want to know how to navigate that because. You know, I, I don't want to get, quote, you know, in the way, I guess, of my husband and his coaching and his intensity. But sometimes it's really, I think, just just over the boundary um, and just kind of an example. Yeah, give me an example. Yeah. Yeah, we were just a couple of weeks ago. This is, I guess, probably why it prompt my, my question. But uh, we were driving home from uh, not a game, a basketball game, but a basketball practice. And, um, my husband was very disappointed with the, with the efforts given with the, you know, the outcome of the practice, whatnot. And for not even joking, 50 minute car ride home, he yelled and screamed at like the top of his lungs of just his, you know, dis- disgust, his disappointment. And in that moment, I just was kind of like, you know, wow, this is really happening. Uh, I have to say something. I didn't say something in the car. Why not? Why not? Um, Why not? Why not? Why not? Um, Why didn't you stop and say, nobody talks to my son like this? Stop. Like, what kept you from that? My husband's hard to approach. Um, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm talking about, like, if a rabid oh. dog comes chasing after your son, you, a, 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 oh, I know. mama I know. gets in between them. I don't care about, like, at that point, your husband's out of control. He's a lunatic. Yeah. He's a child. What kept mama from getting between a lunatic and her baby? Are you unsafe? No, I don't, I don't think I am. Do you ever get that sort of treatment? Uh, no. Sarah. We've never, we've never yelled and screamed at each other, but no, he, um. Yeah, and and I, I think that's probably why. Maybe I was very taken aback in that moment. Like, this, what is going on here? Because it's not a regular thing. Well, one, I'm not always in the car with them after practicing games. There you so go. Maybe it does happen. Yep. Um, but I, I was very like taken aback by it. And have you talked since every, about it? Yeah. So. Then that night, he, as soon as we got home, um, he just, he hit the showers. Like he was just, you could tell something was going on. He was, you know, he didn't talk to anybody. He just went in the house. I talked to the kids, you know, let them know, Hey, are you okay? Kind of checked in with them. And they were like, that was rough. I don't know why. And so, okay, let's, you know, get to bed and dinner and all those things. And I approached him. He was, you know, in our room, kind of TV mode. Just, you could tell he was chilling out. And the first thing I asked him was, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, cool. I'm good. Okay. And I said, you know, well, what just happened in the car was, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not okay with what just happened. Can we talk about it? Because, wow. And he got really defensive and um, basically was like, no, I don't want to talk about it tonight because nothing good will come of it. And basically the next 24 hours was just silent. And that's, that's kind of how he gets when he's frustrated. So I, I knew, you know, um, 
So the next night I approached him again, same thing, kind of nighttime, boiling down, it's calm, he's in a better mood. And uh, and he acted like nothing had happened. He was just annoyed that I was even asking him and bringing it up. And, and I basically was like, hey, hey, those are my kids. They're your kids, but they're my kids too. And I, you know, that was, that was totally over the line. And I said, I understand that you, how you're very passionate about, you know, their, their efforts and you want to see them do well. I said, I want to see them do well too. But that was just, I think more damaging and more counterproductive than good. And, and I had shared with him what the kids had shared with me that night when we got home and that they basically were like, that's not motivating. My oldest even said he doesn't even necessarily want to play basketball anymore. And he just kind of like wrote it off. Like, oh, they're kids and they're going to do that even if you ask them to do chores. They're just, you know, sensitive. And So here, here's the thing. Like if that's my kid, the season's over today. They're out. Yeah. Out. And I'm a college athlete too. I trained with a professional MMA team. I know about working really hard. And I know about coaches getting in my face. I know about coaches pushing me, pushing me, and pushing me. This is abuse. And you're going to create a, you're going to not create, you're going to further a generation of young people whose relationship with their parents is weaponized. One from the one that's, that's hurting them and the other from the parent that won't protect them. Hmm. And that sort of rage that he's got pulsing through his veins ends real bad at some point. Got to stop. And the, oh, they're just kids. That's not true, man. It's abusive. It's absolutely stone abusive. And here's the thing. You know that, right? Yeah. Like, I can hear it in you that you know it. Why do you feel powerless to say, not my kids? Because if, if, if an employee at McDonald's talked to your kids that way, you'd walk out of that restaurant. If a teacher talked to your kids that way, they would never go back to that school. Right. And so what makes it okay? If another coach talked to your kids that way, you'd be off that team so fast. Mm-hmm. And so my question, like, there's something, there's a safety issue here. I don't know what it is. Either you've lived in this for so long or it get, like, yeah, I, tr- like, I trust you. It may be so shell-shocked. Like, it may be so, what is happening to the man I love? But your kids desperately need you get get them away from this lunatic. <sighs> He's got something going on in him that is deep and full of rage. Yeah. Over a basketball practice? Why would you yell at your kid over a basketball practice? Right, right. It's just, that's ins- I mean, if you just say it out loud, it's insane. And it's not about, they need to learn how to work hard. Yeah, they need to learn how to work hard and responsibility. And the best way a child can learn responsibility is not by screaming at them and turning them into a <laughs> just setting off every fight or flight alarm they have. Uh, Dr. Nadine Burke Harris, she's just a, she's a savant. She's brilliant. She researches childhood trauma. And here's a, a, an analogy she gives. She says, our, our fight or flight systems are designed for when a bear shows up in front of our cave. And then our bodies signal to take off. Either we fight that bear, we run from that bear, we don't have biological systems for what happens when that bear just decides to live in that cave. Or if every day we walk into our home, which should be our safe place, there's a bear there. And that's what your kids have. And so their bodies are eating themselves from the inside out. And I think yours is too. And my guess is his is too. If you had to guess what's going on inside of him, you've known him for a long time. What is it? Um, he, I believe he's trying to live out his dream through our kids. For hundred percent. Yeah. And that, but that intensive, his desire to live out a dream means he's not loving his life right now. Why not? What about his current life is no good. Uh, that's a 
Great question. A question I've been <laughs> wanting to know for a while. Um, I I think you know. He well, he's not happy where he is. I guess in life, like he's with you, with his career, with his two kids. Like what? I think I think with career in particular. I mean, he's had a lot of. Um, uh, he's an entrepreneur and he's had just a lot of, I think, failures and things in the last few years. Yeah. And, um, You'll have to get in line on that one, man. There's a whole millions of right? us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know, I, I think it's a plethora. I, he's, yeah, it's, it's hard to even just pinpoint, um, because it's, it's hard to really talk to him. It's hard to get, you know, he doesn't like to share his feelings. <laughs> um, it's just, yeah, he, it's, it's, it's a lot, um, both it's, into it, one. And it's, so we're, we're doing something I don't like to do, which is to talk about somebody when they're not on the show, um, <laughs> when they're on the phone, but here's why I'm doing that because you're, you set sail and here's where this goes. You either have to turn off your maternal instinct to protect your kids and let dad do what dad's going to do you set sail into another harbor to protect yourself. And dads and boys do what dads and boys do. And again, I'm not, please hear me say, I'm not for letting kids sit around and play video games. And I'm not for letting like weakness. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about abuse. And all right, let me just, I'll say like, I think you know this, but your marriage is in trouble. Am I right? Yeah, it's it's been quite serious. Yeah, there's been stuff for the last few years for sure. Yes. Does he have somebody else? Uh, he did. Okay. Do you? No. No? Have y'all come back from that? Uh, I think not completely. Um you know, we were in counseling for like a year. And what went sideways with that? I just, I think he's, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say, but he has intensity with things when he's in the moment, when there's, it needs to be intense. And then it just kind of things fade. Um, what kind of athlete like, was he? Uh, like what sport or yes, what? Yes, Just, yes, yes. He played, yeah, he played basketball. Okay. So here's where I really struggle with that analogy with, um, like athletes, especially those who, uh, any athlete, any of them, but especially those who play sports, like with balls, like football or basketball is you get really intense in those moments and everything lasers down to repetition and practice and precision. And so when I hear athletes, especially former athletes, especially former athlete dads who can't let it go and are trying to uh, abuse their children through their own wacko filter, I don't buy the argument because when those folks lasered down, they were able to follow the play and get a layup. They were able to slide their feet in the, just the right way to stand, to prevent the penetration from the top of the key and to cause them to kick that ball out. And at the same time, they're already pivoting their body because that, that five is coming across the middle, right? He knows all those things. And so either he chooses to be out of control, madness with his family, or he chooses to be in control. And he proved it for year after year after year on the court. And he's chosen to not put that same level of effort and care and love into his family. That's why that's unacceptable. That's why I don't buy it. Mm -hmm. And your family deserves that level of intensity and care and energy and practice. Not running a pseudo boot camp for future former athletes who are going to grow up and, may, man, maybe he'll go to college. Great. Now I got to talk to you guys. Stay way far from y'all if your marriage even makes it that long. And here, and I know I'm being hard. Normally, I'm not hard like this on the show. I get real defensive of children. 
And I know you do too. And so I'm speaking with you here, but I get real defensive of children. And I don't know the ins and outs of your marriage, but it sounds like there is a nuclear reactor between the two of you, and it is slowly starting to leak out all over the people that y'all care about and love. Tell me I'm wrong, or what, what do you think? Yeah, that's, I mean, you're not wrong. He sounds like a caged animal, like somebody who feels trapped. Yeah, and I mean, we've... You feel caged, too, but... Yeah. So what's your way forward? Uh, we want it to be together. I mean, I, I want it to be where there's, you know, balance um, with with our family unit, with the boys' activities, with us. Um, and it's it's almost like it's it's getting kind of... In our counseling and stuff like that, we talked about, you know, rules and things like that and how what I could bring and, and what he brings. And, you know, we're two very different people. Like, I like, you know, outdoor adventures and I like, you know, going to the lake and hiking and stuff like that. And, and um, you know, pulling that into the family so we can all experience that. And it's almost like that part of, of you know, what we had when they were younger is just being, like, suffocated because of the sports and the day in and day out. And it's like, you know... It's, it's just getting to the point where it's really difficult to even propose to do something like that because there literally is no time. Right. And so, um, so I want you to, in, in desperate fashion, quickly, y'all have to create a world where sports is not the center of your universe. And you and your husband got some great things from athletics. I did too. Really great things. And I got a lot of baggage from it too. It's both and. It's good and bad. <laughs> and what I had to do and I have to do because I've got a young son who's a stud he's got um, physical attributes that I never had and when I say stud I mean like freaking nature good and I have had to learn to laugh at practice do you know what I do sometimes I take a book to practice not to not plug in but so that I make sure I stay unplugged because I have to remember, he's just playing with his buddies and he's 11. Mm -hmm. There's no scholarships getting handed out today. And I'd much rather him learn what accountability is for a team. So here's my rules. Are you going to play? Not you have to. And if you don't, then we're going to have some, we're going to do some exercises and movement here at the house. Uh, my wife picks him up and they go for runs now because we're in between seasons and I didn't make him I wanted him to do wrestling so bad I wanted him to do it so bad because I know it'd be good for him and he didn't want to and so he, I didn't make him but we're still doing stuff but we're doing it as a family and she, my wife's like you she likes to be outside so they go running after school together and it's they have a blast together and they are they are he's gonna have to do stuff so I'm not just saying to do nothing mm -hmm. if he commits to a team there's no quitting for that season because he committed to a team even when it's uncomfortable, even when he has to miss sleepovers. Even, so we're all about accountability. And he gets to learn if you don't, if you stay up all night and eat garbage and don't practice hard, then you probably lose. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. And that's where the accountability comes in, not from me screaming like a lunatic in the car. It, mm -hmm. And I can talk to him and say, hey, tell me about that game. Where do you think that loss came from? And he can, he'll be able to articulate it. Well, I didn't really <laughs> put the time in on the front end. Awesome. How can I serve you? How can I help? You know, moving forward. Well, it'd be cool if we just play catch. Great. You know what I mean? So there's ways to get at the accountability without brute force and childhood screaming. But at the end of the day, here's where we're at. You've got some real hard conversations to have. And if I'm you, I would, you've got a lot. Do I protect my boys? Do I protect myself? Do I save my marriage? I got a husband who's struggling. You got a lot going on. So if I'm you, I'm making a call to a counselor today for me. Because you got to pull these things apart and get some action plans. Action plan number one is 
whether it's a letter or it's a direct conversation with husband, you will not yell at my boys like that again. I need that to be loud and clear. And if this happens again, I'm going to withdraw them from the basketball team. They will not play. And if any part of that conversation, imagining that conversation makes you feel unsafe, like you're going to get hurt, you're going to get kicked out, you got to deal with that ASAP. And it, there needs to be a very clear, you will not yell at my boys. That's not motivating. That's not helpful. That's none of those things. I'm making them tough. It's none of those things. Nonsense. Nonsense. They're not in the military. Military, whole different, pro- whole different ballgame. And then you got to get serious about, do you want to save your marriage? Because your trajectory in your marriage is not good. His behavior is that of a caged animal. And it ends poorly. Poorly, 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 poorly. And if he wants to call a show, I'd love to talk to him too. But your boys need you. Because they're going to remember back and remember dad was out of control with rage and mom just sat there and watched it. And Sarah, I know you love those boys. I know that's scary. And I want you to resolve that never happens again. Never happens again. got a long road ahead of you and we're here with you sister call me anytime I can help I know these are hard 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 